and I make whole food, plant-based food that I think people really enjoy eating because it tastes good. And today I'm going to make a kale salad that tastes good. To me it will anyway. And the, the way we start is we start with kale and strip it off the stems. I've already done that so I wouldn't waste a lot of time doing that on camera today. Be sure and get nice fresh kale. Don't get the kale that's all blemished and already really hard and dried out. A lot of times in the store, the kale looks really dry. And if you've never used a salad spinner, you basically put it in this basket. I like to cut it up first before I spin it. And then you just basically put this. And then when you want to stop it, it has a little thing you depress that stops it. You pour out all the water. I've already done it so there's no water left. And then you put it in your bowl. And this is really important when you have lettuce because, you know, wet lettuce doesn't really hold salad dressing well. And it, it just makes a huge difference. Okay, so now I've got this gigantic bowl of kale. And where people don't like kale is, kale is kind of hard. You know, it, there's nothing you can do about that. It's not a soft, if you hear funny noise my dog Kameko the boxer is over there by herself making all that noise rolling around on her dog bed so excuse me if that's bothering you it's a little too late to kick her out of my studio right now okay so the kale is hard there's a bunch of it there's a whole bunch of it so we're going to massage the kale we're going to put in about three teaspoons of this is low sodium soy sauce this is a teaspoon and a half measure. And we're just going to take it and we're going to kind of crunch it up. And you saw how full the bowl was when we started. And the purpose of massaging your kale is that softens it, okay? And softer kale is better tasting kale. So it, and it, it's just easier to get down because some people say that Kale is so hard to eat, they have to chew so much. So this just makes it more palatable. So even though that may seem silly to massage your kale, do it anyway. If you don't like soy sauce, you can use lemon juice, you could use tahini. Uh, in the original recipes where they did that, did this, they would use um, olive oil, but I don't use oil. I have whole food, plant-based oil-free food, so since I don't use oil, I'm using soy sauce. So I want you to see that that gigantic, okay, remember when we started, my bowl was completely full to overflowing of kale. Now it's all been kind of massaged down to this a lot more manageable amount. Isn't that cool how that worked? So now we're gonna start putting other things in the kale salad. So for example, I have, I have a whole basket of things over here. I have everything from <clears throat> red cabbage, carrots, red onion, red bell pepper, just a lot of really good things. And the reason for that is because I'm going to use my cut resistant glove because I like the salad to have a lot of variety. I think that makes it taste better. Cut resistant glove is not cut proof. It's just a good idea to use it when you're using the mandolin because this mandolin is really sharp. This is my sharp one. And if you just kind of accidentally get a little bit too close to it, well, you know, it could be a little painful. So better safe than sorry. It will, you know, give you a little cushion before you cut yourself. So I know you see all the famous chefs on the cooking shows and they don't use cut resistant gloves or guards or anything but you know I'm trying to make it to where things are safe for you so there you go see what a that made a huge pile of cabbage and the thing about using this really good quality mandolin is it the cabbage is really thin it's like paper thin so we could do that with everything we could do that with our bell pepper and then what we end up with are really thin slices of bell pepper. Now this is cutting it a little too thin so I can adjust this little wheel here and then it's a little bit thicker and more manageable. So I'm just kind of going around the pepper and cutting some nice little strips of red bell pepper. And I don't really want a lot of red bell pepper in my kale salad. Just a little. 
I'll use the rest of this for other salads. But you see what I have here? I have a nice little assortment of little um, bird ran into the window. And I'm just going to kind of cut these a little because some of them were a little big. So there we go. I have my beautiful red bell peppers. And we could have put more in, but I think that was enough. And then uh, red onion. I love red onions. Some people like to put scallions in their kale salad. So, you know, whatever you prefer, red onions or um, scallions or green onions. Now, I like it, them a little thinner, so I'm going to make it a little bit thinner by turning it to the right and making the, the onion slices super thin. I think that tastes really good when you have thin onion slices because I don't want to bite into a bunch of thick pieces of onion. And put as much as you want in there. You know, this, I like onions, so I put quite a few in there, but you see how they're, they're super thin, so they're not going to be like biting into big chunks of onion. And look, look at the colors, purple, red, more purple. Then we're going to have orange. I'm going to put a carrot in here. And in this case, what I'm going to do with the carrot is just your good old-fashioned grater. This is like the size of a box grater, you'll see. And I'm just going to do one carrot. You could do more, but I don't really want a lot of carrots in here. One is enough. And I'm going to tell you about my carrots here in a second. Okay, and this piece of carrot is getting kind of close to the grater. This is my snack for later. <laughs> So I love messing with vegetables because you always can eat the ends in pieces. I don't know, I always do. All right, so we got the carrot in there. And then what else are we going to put in here? Um, let's see, we have some cherry tomatoes. And um, I think that was it. Oh, we could, we could have put some green bell pepper in it. I got this from the garden, but I'm, I put the red bell pepper in it, so I'm going to hold off on that. But I'm going to just put the cherry tomatoes in there for now. Get some of this stuff out of the way. And these are little organic red cherry tomatoes, but I'm cutting them in half. And the reason for cutting them in half is if you've ever popped a whole cherry tomato in your mouth, and then it's, the seeds popped out all over you, that's not a pleasant experience, is it? So we don't want that to happen to anybody. And we can put some more over the top at the end, but I'm just going to put a few in for now. Just gives it a nice color. And if there's anything I'm putting in here that you don't like, like let's say that you know tomatoes are something that you can't stand, then you just don't put them in there. Okay, another topping that we can put in here is tofu. So this is tofu that I cooked in my air fryer. It's just basically you know, pressed tofu that I put a little soy sauce and tahini on it and some no salt seasoning blend from Costco that I happen to have around. I stuck it in the air fryer at 350 for about 10 minutes and now I've got these like tofu croutons. I'll put those on last at the top because it's, they tend to get kind of buried in the bottom of the kale salad. And the same with the other things I have, avocado, I'll put that on at the end put this where you can see it. And then I have pecans, and that's another one I'll, I'll put on after it's dressed. And then I also have dried cranberries. Dried cranberries, raisins, any kind of dried fruit. I like a little sweetness. So I'll put all those things on at the very end, but for now we've got to make our dressing. So the dressing is actually really important. Oh, I, know, I want to tell you about the carrots. When you buy carrots for any of your salads, if you can find them with the top still attached, get those. They taste so much sweeter than the ones that have been around forever in the cellophane package. You know, a lot of people don't like plant-based food or ve fresh vegetables because they've never had really good fresh vegetables. They've gotten old vegetables from the grocery store that have been sitting around forever. And so then when they have them, they think, Oh, I don't like vegetables because the carrots taste really bitter and because whatever they've eaten doesn't really have a good taste. So I'm always telling people, be sure and get stuff that tastes really good and then you'll be more likely to have the vegetables. 
So our dressing is just going to have some fresh stuff in it, like lemon juice. So I'm going to get a couple of tablespoons of fresh lemon juice out of this. People will ask me, can you use bottles of lemon juice? And of course, you know, I always like everything fresh. So my first answer is going to be not unless you really have to. You know, if you live somewhere where it's hard to get to the grocery store often, and the only thing you can get your hands on is some kind of, you know, lemon juice that <clears throat> is already squeezed. I'm trying to find my uh, tool. I don't see it, my strainer. All right, well, I'm just not going to Oh, here it is. Right in front of me. I knew I had it. Okay, we'll get the lemon juice in here. And that's two tablespoons of lemon juice. And then we're going to put in a couple of tablespoons of tahini. And I've got this Mighty Sesame Tahini. I like it because it's sort of liquid tahini. It doesn't have, it doesn't separate, and you don't have to dig it out of the bottom of the jar every time you use it, which I find to be very tedious. And then um, a tablespoon of maple syrup or date syrup. I'm gonna use maple syrup today. But I usually use date syrup, but you know, maple syrup once in a while is okay. Uh, two tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce. Always use low sodium soy sauce or reduced sodium soy sauce because soy sauce can be kind of high sodium, but I really like the flavor of soy sauce. I'm half Japanese, so I'm never gonna stop using soy sauce unless you know some terrible thing happened and I had to because I just love it. We used to put soy sauce on everything growing up. My mother would, you know, she put it on everything. So we started putting it on everything. We would put it on mashed potatoes, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, get the kind with the mother. And so my father would, my father was American from North Carolina and he would see us putting soy sauce on our mashed potatoes. And he would just give us this look like, I can't believe you're doing that. But we loved it that way, so we did. Okay, two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. I use this Sari brand, S-A-R-I. It is not fortified, two tablespoons. And so it does not have that weird kind of medicinal taste that some, some of the, when I first started using nutritional yeast, I thought it had kind of a medicinal taste, kind of an odd flavor that I did not like. And then last but not least, I forgot to get this out. I'm going to throw in some red chili flakes, okay? I just think that gives it a nice little kick. Just a little sprinkle. It's probably like a fourth of a teaspoon. So then all I have to do since I have my jar, and this is a recycled uh, raspberry jelly, raspberry jam jar from Heidi's Organic Raspberries from Santa Fe or from New Mexico. And I like their jars, so whenever we get a jar of raspberry, jam. I always save the jars to use for stuff like this. So here we have our beautiful kale salad. Remember we put all these different things in it. Carrots, our red cabbage, tomatoes, red onions, and we remember we massage the kale so it softened it up or reduced the volume of it tremendously from a giant bowl to a more manageable amount. Still a lot of kale, but this really makes it more palatable. And we haven't even put the dressing on yet. So then, you know, we can take this dressing. We don't have to put all this dressing on it. So um, let's say that we're going to use this whole bowl right now, and we're going to have the whole kale salad. Then we're going to put all the dressing on it. But let's say you're only going to make one serving, and I think that's what I'm going to do because I'm the only one that's going to eat this today. So if I dress this whole salad, then it's going to shorten the shelf life of it tremendously. So I have these really nice salad bowls over here. So I'm going to make one serving for myself. This is a pretty good size bowl. This is like a six inch salad bowl. So let's say that I'm going to eat this much kale salad. That looks like a lot of kale salad, but kale salad is really good for you. So in the scheme of things, that's not that much. So I'm going to take my kale salad. And then I'm going to put the dressing on that I want for my personal serving. 
instead of putting it on the whole bowl, I'm going to put it on my little bowl. And about two tablespoons is all I need. And then I'm going to mix that up. And that's all what you have to do. You don't have to dress your whole salad. Now, if you dress the whole kale salad with this dressing and use the whole jar, which you don't even have to use the whole jar, but let's say you like it heavily dressed, then you need to eat it. You need to eat it by tomorrow or you're going to have inedible kale salad. You know, one day is about all you can let it hold for. So that's why I don't think I'm going to eat all this salad today and tomorrow. I've made this before and I've tr I tried doing that and I ended up eating like a gigantic bowl of kale salad on day two to, eat, to use it up and it was like, oh, it was too much. I could just... It was just, just let me say it was too much kale in one day, in two days. So I've got my nice tofu on there. And then, remember I said we could put some cranberries and then pecans. And I'm going to chop the pecans up a little bit. Pecans are really popular in Texas where I live. So we get them, especially in November. I usually go to San Saba, the pecan capital of Texas and get like a year's supply of pecans. And by this time of the year, I've already used them all. But these were some local pecans that I bought at the grocery store. And remember what I said about we could add some more tomatoes. See, the tomatoes kind of got buried in there. So on top, I can put a few more. So they look good. You know, so you can tell it's got tomatoes in it. I'll we'll put three little of these cherry tomatoes in there. And then the avocado. I saved that for last. Avocado on kale salad is outstanding. So we can just put a few little pieces of avocado on here. Just open it up. Well, this is a good one. You know how hard it is to get a ripe avocado? You could look at avocados all day long and not get one single good one. And I bought this the other day and it turned out to be a good one. And that's very rare. So I'll put my avocado on here. I kind of like to keep the avocado in one little section. That's just how I do it. But you know you could spread it all over if you wanted to. And then I can put a little tiny drizzle of more dressing just over the top. Now all that's left is to oh, forgot my fork. All that's left is to take a bite of this scrumptious salad. And then I can tell you that the kale was easy to chew. Mmm. It's not bitter. And it's not hard to chew. So, if you want to make a really good kale salad that your friends will love, that you can eat anytime you want, um, fall and winter is a good time to get kale at the grocery store, but some of the best kale is this time of year. In fact, I have it growing all through my garden, and I can just go out and pick it from there and start using it for kale salad. So the key is have some really good fresh components, cut everything thin <clears throat> on your mandolin, like I did, make a super great dressing. The dressing is really important. Have some really great toppings like some crunchy nuts, some sweet cranberries. The tofu is great for a little protein or beans. And then I didn't even show you, but you know, put some freshly ground pepper on it, freshly ground sea salt, whatever makes it good for you, and just make this kale salad. I think you'll really love it. I enjoy it, and I plan to eat this whole bowl sometime today and have it again tomorrow and maybe the next day. So if you like my healthy whole food plant-based recipes, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram, and I teach Zoom classes. My classes are listed at my website, chef-julia.com, and my next class is called Comfort Food on September 17th. So thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye-bye.